So we now pretty much got all of the results of the US midterm elections. It's been almost a week since the votes were cast and it was not a red tsunami or a red wave. And it wasn't really a red trickle either because you can kind of make the argument that the Democrats were the ones who kind of actually did a bit better, especially c compared to the expectations that were set for them because uh, they're going to... They've picked up a gubernatorial race. They've picked up a seat in the Senate. They are going to lose some seats in the House, but it's going to be they're they're going to lose control of the House by a razor thin margin, likely. Uh, and remember, going into this, the Republicans were expected to win like 30, 40, 50 extra seats in the House. So I'll get into some of the reasons why I thought this was before the election, because I kind of had a feeling it wasn't going to be a complete blowout for the Democrats. Uh, but, and all I have is just myself here, just in Britain, randomly predicting stuff, but I could just feel it. Uh, so I'll get into some of the reasons before the election, why I thought it wasn't going to be a massive red wave. And then there's a, and then also a few reasons as to why, the Republicans still did okay. So the first one was Roe versus Wade. That was massive. In fact, I think that probably swayed the whole campaign, really, because if it hadn't have been for that, then the Republicans probably would have still won, even with Biden doing a bit more stuff recently, which leads me to my next point, Biden actually doing some stuff. The student debt thing helped massively youth turnout in fact, young voters in general swayed in the exit poll, voted Democrat by 28 points, which is more than any other demographic. And in fact, even the most pro-Republican demographic in the poll, the over 65s, uh, they only voted Republican by 12 points. So even though youth, um, the young voters don't make up as big a percentage as a pop of the population, it definitely made a massive impact. And the fact that it was like, hmm, but Biden's actually doing something. Remember, he had a 31% approval rating uh, back in July when yeah everything was terrible and he was just doing nothing, sitting on his ass for nearly two years. But he was starting to do stuff. You know, the Inflation Reduction Act is another example of, of that and how all the Republicans voted against it. The other point is, if we're going to talk about Biden, we got to talk about his opponent. And of course, Trump was back on the scene this summer. Uh, obviously, there was the January 6th hearings, but also just the whole Mar-a-Lago raid and kind of just coming back and just going, it was a stolen election. It was so fraudulent. They rigged it so riggedly. Uh, that's that sort of, sort of shit. It just, it's like people are going to be turned off by that and they're not going to want to vote for you. And it was shown in the exit poll when like 60% of the country has got an unfavorable opinion of him. And America is a pretty partisan country. So you can rely on a sizable chunk of the country at supporting you, even if you just murdered like half the world's population and burnt down a bunch of orphanages just because of how partisan and people are with, and also with the culture war and everything that's so big there. Yeah. Trump is really disliked and he's now after this election and the fact that all his candidates got slacked, uh, hemorrhaging support at a rate I've never seen before. So we'll get to that in a minute as well. Uh, I think and that leads me to my other point, Republicans being way more right wing than usual and just openly authoritarian and just fascist pretty much. And um, just uh, I mean, not just on the Roe versus Wade, not just on the election denialism, but also the whole thing about um, just like they, the majority of vote, Republicans in the House voted against gay, voted against gay marriage. A majority of Republicans in the House voted against a right to contraception. Like they're not normal. They're an extreme party, even by, you know, right wing standards. They're they're very extreme. They get, they're getting more extreme by the minute. Uh, and then the other thing was they didn't really have any policy platform whatsoever, uh, apart from inflation is bad, but they didn't actually say how they were going to deal with it. They were just sort of saying that it's Joe Biden's fault. Uh, 
which kind of did leak over to the exit polls because there were people saying that uh, Biden's policies were in part to blame for high inflation. But and there was definitely some people with that mindset. But the other interesting thing was, you know, trying to make everything about Biden. Then the exit poll showed most people didn't factor in Biden as a vote. And that's another reason why I think the Democrats did OK in this election. People weren't thinking about Biden. They were thinking a lot more about the local picture and also the fact that I may not like Biden, but those other guys are a hell of a lot worse. Uh, and then the other thing was Democrats actually outperformed the last midterm elections and they outperformed five special elections this year. There was one in New York uh, back in the summer, I think, uh, after Roe versus Wade and, and the student debt thing, I think, where the Democrats were expected to lose. It's generally an area that reflects the mood of the whole country where like wherever wherever that area votes is generally indicative of what the country voted and how the country the rest of the US voted. And it was the Republicans expected to win it and the Democrat candidate won it. And that was like that that was one of the moments where I was like, oh because if you remember Trump was uh, outperformed the polls in 2016 and in 2020, even in defeat. And so pollsters kind of had a baked in advantage for Republicans uh, in the polls. A lot of them did. And I think that was why I, part of the reason I was thinking like, yeah, the Democrats are going to do a lot better because they're going to outperform the polls. So it's quite funny that, you know, we it seems like whatever. And I don't blame the polling companies for this or the polling aggregates like 538 and even rcp because they're just trying to like see what put all the science together in their head and try and get a good picture of it but it's like whatever they do it's wrong in one way or it's wrong to the other side uh and then so here are some reasons i thought the republicans could do well uh it's midterm year the democrats are in power biden is still unpopular even after doing some stuff over the summer and being a little bit more lucid, he seemed like he was on the pills a bit more. Like, if you know what I mean, he was kind of like, look, look, man, here's the deal. He was he wasn't as sleepy as he normally is. Uh, but still, Democrats are unpopular. They've been in power. Inflation at a 40 year high. Uh, interest rates going up. And um, uh, yeah, as and then also the Republicans just le leading in the polls on all the big issues, which abortion was quite far back, actually, in the polls. And then when the, the votes came in, the exit poll showed it was like second. In some states, it was first. And that was a big moment where I was like, oh, yeah, is it isn't going to be a red wave. I knew it because the Republicans did lead on all the big issues, inflation, the economy, which are kind of connected really and also crime which was made a big issue by the media in part when it hasn't actually gone up that much but it's like the democrats want crime and they're bringing crime to your city and you have to vote republican to stop it uh but that didn't actually work that well clearly and another thing crucial thing i don't think democrats push back on stuff hard enough they were putting all their eggs in the Roe versus Wade and the whole um, Republicans want to overturn elections stuff, which are great arguments. They would work in any other country. But I feel like in the US, Americans would vote for Adolf Hitler if if he was promising to lower gas prices. So I don't think the Democrats push back hard enough. For example, on the crime stuff, you can say that Republicans are the ones that want criminals to bear arms. Uh and also the fact that Republicans themselves are just a bunch of criminals. Look at their fucking leader. He's under nine criminal investigations. That's all you have to say. Uh, and then, you know, for the stuff like inflation, you say, well, it's corporate price gouging. What are you going to do about it? You're just going to give more tax cuts to the rich. Uh, and they they didn't have the greatest messaging. I think Obama was the only one at some of the rallies that was actually properly like going after the Republicans and rebutting all those points, which is ironic because Obama was kind of disappointing as a president <clears throat> and didn't do nearly enough. And then a few more reasons. I think the Democrats did actually quite well. And this may seem like a joke. 
I think the dark Brandon meme coinciding with the whole student debt thing, I think that that actually might have had an impact. Uh, and it, it just, the, I mean, if you look at the youth turnout, I know it seems like a joke and the whole meme magic, the meme magic thing, like the, how, how Trump got elected. But I think that played some sort of role, especially how Biden was a lot more alive on the campaign trail around that meme. It's like, I, I actually feel like he's seen those memes and he's kind of like got embraced it or one of his like advisors or something has shown them and been like, do this. Uh Another thing, which is something that I was against, the whole thing of propping up election deniers and extremists in the Republican Party, because Democrats always go on about the fact it's like we need a strong Republican Party of and we don't need all the MAGA Republicans. We need the sensible Republicans, which I mean, have you looked at their policies, mate? So it's like the rhetoric they don't like, but the actual policies they it's like oh who cares i'm sure they're all right when they're actually not but they propped up a bunch of far right extremists even for republican standards in the republican primaries helped them a bit so that when they would be facing them in the actual election when it's democrat versus extremist republican the republican would lose and i was against this i still think they shouldn't have done it and in a lot of cases they probably would have won anyway but it seems to have worked because in pretty much all in every single case the republican that got propped up by the democratic party lost um and then another thing in places you know in the midwest where democrats continued to win back support obviously they lost in 2016 the swing states and then biden won them back a lot of them back in 2020 like michigan pennsylvania etc uh you know biden onshored 350,000 jobs these places that have been hit massively with deindustrialization, and trump said we're gonna bring back so many jobs when he was president he never did it and then he lost those states and the democrats actually are expanding on their leads in some of those places because biden is actually doing stuff and actually delivering on his promises and, and he is bringing back jobs as much as i don't like the guy there's another point uh which seems like a joke but it is genuinely real and it's that the Republicans may have lost in a few very swing districts because of COVID. Now, I'm not talking about COVID in the sense of uh, uh, Republicans did a bad job handling it when they were in office, when Trump was in office, because that was two years ago. I'm talking about the fact that because Republicans, specifically Republican leader, Republican leadership, specifically Donald Trump, really, has kind of just said it's fake, it's China, it's a hoax, liberal hoax. I mean, obviously, he only said that at the start, but he kind of downplayed it for the whole thing. And ironically, Operation Warp Speed, the whole vaccine rollout thing that he started when he was president, one of the few achievements, none of his supporters want to go near it. Because, you know, they're all anti-vax and there's nothing, there's nothing wrong about having hesitancy against a vaccine, but they're just automatically not going to take it. And because of that, and because they're not cautious about COVID at all, because Trump obviously, you know, quote, was always questioning the effectiveness of masks in the 2020 campaign as well. Uh, a lot of Republicans disproportionately to Democrats died of COVID, and that may have actually impacted uh the actual races in some very close house races. It would have actually impacted the Lauren Boebert race, but she actually did win. Uh, and it looked like she was going to lose at some point, but then she did unfortunately win. But, you know, it is what it is. And the the Republicans may have lost in a few areas because of that. Uh, and then also just... I mean, uh, the Republicans were just obsessed over the culture war bollocks. And it's fu it is always funny how they always go on about it. Like we like us lefties are the ones who bring it up when when we bring it up. It's usually as a response to them or it's as basic as racism is bad. And it's like, oh, the, the woke mob is coming to take us over. Uh, and that's like they were just so obsessed about trans issues matt walsh actually quite funnily was like the day before the election was like democrats have lost on trans issues and and then obviously 
well, they didn't lose the election because I think most people don't actually give a shit about trans people living their lives. Uh, and then there's actually a few more reasons why, before I get to the actual results, a few more reasons why the Democrats didn't do better. So um, still nominating progressives are clearly the future of the party. And it doesn't matter what people think about labels, because when people think of the label moderate and centrist, the policies are usually quite left, left wing, center left, certainly on economics. So, you know, raising the minimum wage, Medicare for all. Um, and this is true in the UK as well with left wing policies where people don't like the label of socialism or left wing a lot of the time. But they do like the policies themselves. And in places like New York, in Florida, uh, where the Democrats do badly. And I'm not saying that the Democrats, especially in like places like Florida, they would have done better. But they nominated an ex-cop and an ex-Republican for the Democrats um, candidate in Florida. They got trounced by Ron DeSantis. And I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, is And because the simple reason is, if you give people Diet Coke or Coke, most people are going to go with the Coke. And the people that prefer Pepsi are just not going to vote for any of them. That's that's how I define it. People are, If people are left wing, even if you're in a like Republican sort of place, you're better to go in on the Republic on the left wing sort of arguments and win over the left wing voters and get 48 percent of the vote than pretend to be a Republican. All the Republicans vote for the Republican candidate anyway, and then all the all the lefties stay at home and you get no votes. Uh, and then another thing is gerrymandering. Democrats probably could have held on to the House if it wasn't for gerrymandering in certain areas. Uh, and yeah, so we're getting to the actual results now. Uh, obviously, as I said, the Senate uh, is Democrats picked up a seat and they've lost some place in the House. It's kind of just pretty much dead even. John Fetterman won in Pennsylvania. He actually outperformed Biden in pretty much majority of the places, which kind of they're building on their coalition and winning back working class voters. Uh, the Democrats are not that they really lost them, but they did lose a lot of them in 2016 when uh, obviously Trump won them against Hillary. Uh, and also, I think the debate he had might have actually helped him because Dr. Oz even though he seemed like he knew what he was talking about, maybe he didn't, but even though he seemed a bit, he had it together and obviously John Fetterman had had a stroke and was losing, losing his lead in the polls quite quickly. Uh, it might have helped him because he just seemed like a normal guy who was struggling and Dr. Oz just seemed like a massive prick and a massive douche. And obviously that's another Trump endorsed candidate that lost. Uh, speaking of Trump endorsed candidates, you know, in Georgia, for example, Herschel Walker has got less votes, but it is going to go to a runoff. But he's going to have to convince people in Georgia that a de deadlock Senate is good. So I can't see him winning that. Uh, Brian Kemp, however, who stood up to Trump when Trump wanted Georgia, the result to be overturned so he could win in 2020. Brian Kemp is still a Republican, but he said no. And Brian Kemp has been rewarded. He massively won against Stacey Abrams. So, you know, the the progressives, the progressive wing of the Democrats doing well, the far right wing of the Republicans doing badly. That's brilliant, I think. And you get more of this. This is, I mean, Chris Sununununu, I don't know how to pronounce that, one in New Hampshire and then Maggie Hassan, um, one in the Senate. So Republican governor. Part of that maybe is because the incumbent is popular. But again, it's like, these sort of less right wing extremist Republicans uh, <clears throat> doing all right. But then the Democrats massively beating the complete extremist election deniers. Uh, and also Carrie Lake lost in Arizona. You know, there was no even the Katie Hobbs didn't even campaign and the polls. Carrie Lake was up in all of them. Uh, it's quite funny, actually, because Tulsi Gabbard has now got. I think one hundred percent losing rate in all the candidates she endorsed, cross party, which were mostly Republicans, because she is a Republican. She kind of just is a grifter now. 
and I think now is is a good time to actually get into some of the direct ballots. Arizona, speak on the topic of Arizona, voted against stricter voter ID, which considering, you know, the instinct of most people, like, oh, of course you should need ID to vote. Uh, no, people voted against that, which is good. Uh, Oregon added the right to affordable health care to the state constitution, and they worded it in a really Weasley way as well, so it's impressive that it won. Uh, they also made it harder to buy guns, which is somewhat surprising, I guess, in a state like that, but it's welcomed uh, nonetheless to have some gun controls. Uh, Colorado voted to legalize psychedelics. Um, California? California voted um, to have a right to abortion like enshrined in their state constitution. And every single state that voted on abortion voted for the pro-choice position. Even Kentucky, they were they had a vote on banning it and they voted against it. And that's fucking Mitch McConnell's been re-elected a million times there. And, you know, I mean, that tells you all you need to know. Abortion... I don't, abortion isn't popular, but, you know, banning abortion is very unpopular. In Nevada, they voted for ranked choice voting. Um, Connecticut, they made it, um, they legalized early voting. In Massachusetts, they put a 4% extra marginal tax rate above $1 million. Uh, Nebraska, increased the minimum wage of $15 by 2026. That's pretty weak, I still think, but still... Uh, marijuana legalization faded in North and South Dakota and Arkansas, but it won in Maryland and Missouri. I, I'm a big fan of direct democracy. It didn't really work with Brexit because we didn't have a plan afterwards. But I, I'm always a fan of like referendums and getting people to vote on the direct issues. Remember in 2020, Biden won, lost Florida. And obviously the Republicans massively want it now. Yet 60% of them voted for a $15 minimum wage. Uh, I guess it's, and then also um, I'll get some more of the results now. So Ron DeSantis won big in Florida. So that um, really considering all the Trump endorsed candidates did really badly. And then Ron DeSantis has actually done really well. He's Trump's main rival. You know, he's now ahead in the polls. Um, the right wing media is turning on Trump at a level I've never seen. Um, and also the other places the Republicans did well were New York, which is partly because they just had a bunch of dumb right wingers, Democrat, dumb centrist right wing Democrats running there. Also, Ohio and Texas, you know, Texas was kind of obvious, but it looked like it was going better this direction. Texas is unwinnable. Beto O'Rourke has lost like a million times now. And Ohio, like Florida, is no longer a purple state. It's a solid red state. And that was one of the few places where like a Trump endorsed candidate did very well. Uh, and then also some good stuff like uh, the Democrats took complete control of the governments in Michigan, Maryland and Massachusetts, which is great for things, you know, that's kind of where deep change actually gets done at the state level. Uh <clears throat> And uh, another thing about, so yeah, <clears throat> so it'll be interesting to see like the Republican civil war that ensues now because, you know, Trump is losing his grip on the party and he's losing it hard. It'll be interesting to see um, what happens with the Republican primary going forward. Also with the Democrat one, because Joe Biden's position is now strengthened, even though in the exit poll, two thirds of people don't want him to run again. And he is more still more popular than Trump, though. Um, uh, like he can point to this and be like, see, I'm electorally successful. But I do hope this isn't just, oh, people voted against Republicans because even among voters that somewhat disapprove of the job Biden is doing, they voted Democrat. Independents also voted Democrat. I hope the Democrats take the right lessons away from this. I have a bad feeling they won't, but the evidence is so overwhelming. It can't really be denied. And that America, there is actually some hope to some optimism to be had, even despite, you know, the bad shape the country is in, the fact that progressives are having victories. And it should be interesting to see what happens with I mean the Democratic Party and the Republican Party and this massive Republican civil war that's gonna happen between Trump and DeSantis, with everyone turning on him left and right. So I might do more of these videos in the future, but for now. 
I'll see you in the next one.